Hello and welcome dear students. Today we are going to discuss about the topic linkage disequilibrium. The main objectives of today's lecture are to know the basics of linkage disequilibrium, to know the origin of linkage disequilibrium, to understand the difference between linkage disequilibrium and linkage, to understand the linkage disequilibrium in human populations, to know the utility of linkage disequilibrium to genome-wide association studies, to understand the implications of linkage disequilibrium for gene mapping studies, to know the factors that influence linkage disequilibrium. Dear students, let's start with the introduction first. In population genetics, linkage disequilibrium is the non-random association of alleles at different loci in a given population. Linkage disequilibrium is a population-based parameter that describes the degree to which an allele of one genetic variant is inherited or correlated with an allele of a nearby genetic variant within a given population. Loci are said to be in linkage disequilibrium when the frequency of association of their different alleles is higher or lower than what would be expected if the loci were independent and associated randomly. Linkage disequilibrium is influenced by many factors including selection, the rate of genetic recombination, mutation rate, genetic drift and the system of mating population structure and genetic linkage. As a result, the pattern of linkage disequilibrium in a genome is a powerful signal of the population genetic processes that are structuring it. In spite of its name, linkage disequilibrium may exist between alleles at different loci or position without any genetic linkage between them and independently of whether or not allele frequencies are in equilibrium that is not changing with time. Furthermore, linkage disequilibrium is sometimes referred to as gametic phase disequilibrium. However, the concept also applies to asexual organisms and therefore does not depend on the presence of gametes. As highlighted by Slatkin, linkage disequilibrium is one of those unfortunate terms that do not reveal its meaning. Indeed, linkage disequilibrium means simply a correlation between alleles and the detecting linkage disequilibrium does not ensure either linkage or a lack of equilibrium. This stems from the fact that mechanisms other than just physical proximity on a chromosome that is linkage, such as mutation, genetic drift, and epistatic combinations might also cause gametic phase disequilibrium between unlinked markers. For example, admixing genetically distinct population creates association between two loci or positions with different allele frequencies even if they are unlinked. Linkage disequilibrium can also arise due to population stratification and cryptic relationships within a population that results in correlated allelic frequencies. The pattern of linkage disequilibrium is a powerful indicator of the genetic forces shaping a population. For example, knowledge of linkage disequilibrium helps inferring a population's effective size and past demography. Populations with smaller effective size experience more genetic drift than larger populations. This genetic drift causes linkage disequilibrium between alleles at independently segregating loci at a rate inversely proportional to effective size. This way, an estimate of contemporary effective size can be concluded from linkage disequilibrium information. On the contrary, past effective size is a function of linkage disequilibrium between physically linked loci given that the interloci recombination fractions are available. Accordingly, the closely linked loci indicate population sizes over historical past, while loosely linked loci signify effective size in the immediate past. Linkage disequilibrium 
between linked markers also determines the power and precision of association mapping studies directly influencing our ability to localize genes and or loci responsible for economic traits in agriculture or inherited disease in human. Linkage disequilibrium between two alleles is related to the time of the mutation events, genetic distance and population history. It can be used to improve the power of cancer genetic association studies. Dear students, now let us know some key points about linkage disequilibrium. Linkage disequilibrium is the non-random association of alleles of different loci. There is no single best statistics that quantifies the extent of linkage disequilibrium. Several statistics have been proposed that are useful for different purposes. Recombination interacts in a complex way with selection, mutation, and genetic drift to determine levels of linkage disequilibrium. As a consequence, local and genome-wide patterns of linkage disequilibrium can provide insight into patterns of natural selection and the past history of population growth and dispersal. In humans and other model organisms, linkage disequilibrium between marker alleles and traits or characters of interest allow fine-scale gene mapping. Many recent genome-wide association studies have successfully mapped single nucleotide polymorphisms associated with complex inherited disease in humans. Unusually, high local linkage disequilibrium can indicate an allele that has recently increased to high frequency under strong selection. Several methods have been developed to detect selected loci and to estimate the age of alleles using patterns of linkage disequilibrium. In humans, the analysis of linkage disequilibrium is well underway. The pace is slower in other species, although some model organisms, including mice, dogs, Drosophila, that is fruit fly, and Arabidopsis thaliana, are catching up fast. Dear students, let's discuss about the origin of linkage disequilibrium. Linkage disequilibrium arises when a mutation event gives rise to a new allele on a particular chromosome in an individual. The new allele will be associated with the allele already present on that individual's chromosome for all other loci. In time, as this person reproduces and the population grows, recombination between the new mutation and surrounding loci will return alleles in this region to equilibrium. The new mutation will occur on chromosome regardless of the background of surrounding loci. In stable populations, two factors inhibit this return to linkage equilibrium, time and genetic distance. The closer two loci are, the more time, that is number of recombination events is required for linkage disequilibrium to break down. And the more recent the mutational event occurred, the larger the region of linkage disequilibrium. Dear students, let's understand the difference between linkage disequilibrium versus the linkage. Genetic linkage exists when two alleles are co-inherited within a pedigree and this phenomena is observed across multiple pedigrees. These loci are in linkage because they occur near enough to each other on the same chromosome such that the frequency of recombination measured as Y is relatively low. Linkage disequilibrium differs from linkage in that linkage disequilibrium describes alleles while the linkage describes loci, that is the position. Dear students, let's now discuss about the linkage disequilibrium in human populations. Linkage disequilibrium can also reflect instability or change in populations because modern human chromosomes represent the bottom generation of a very large homo sapiens pedigree patterns of linkage disequilibrium track with human migration patterns. The migration out of Africa into Europe and Asia is seen, for example, in the observation that modern-day Africans tend to have less linkage disequilibrium generally than Europeans or Asians. 
the relative small number of founding chromosomes which migrated to new continents limited the variation induced by recombination. Therefore, more linkage disequilibrium is generally observed in populations which arose relatively recently. The international HapMap project, a large consortium formed in 2002, which characterized haplotypes and linkage disequilibrium in a variety of human populations. Researchers have performed genotyping on millions of genetic markers in individuals from four populations, including Yoruba in Ibadan, Nigeria, Japanese in Tokyo, Japan, Han Chinese in Beijing, China, and Uta residents with ancestry from Northern and Western Europe. These data are publicly available to researchers who aim to analyze these genetic markers in relation to health conditions, including cancer. An alternative way to characterize linkage disequilibrium in human populations involves resequencing genes of interest in a variety of DNA samples. Resequencing data has the advantage that a variety of polymorphism types may be detected, including insertions and deletions, and that rare alleles may be characterized. In 1998, the US National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences embarked on the Environmental Genome Project, including resequencing of key environmentally responsive cancer candidate genes in the populations also assessed by the International HapMap Project. These dense polymorphism data complement the genome-wide HapMap approach and allow researchers access to finer scale linkage disequilibrium information in key genes involved in DNA repair, inflammation, apoptosis, cell cycle, and other pathways. Dear students, let's now know about using linkage disequilibrium to select informative markers. Genetic association studies in cancer epidemiology aim to identify common inherited variants which are related to risks of cancer, that is case control studies, treatment response, survival, and other endpoints. These studies often focus on particular candidate genes that is suspected because of known biological function related to cancer. So candidate genes studies may utilize linkage disequilibrium in that rather than genotyping every genetic marker in a suspected gene or genomic region. Only those markers that are thought to be independent are assessed. This tagging SNP or single nucleotide polymorphism approach can allow for greater gene coverage and cost efficiency. Numerous methods have been developed to identify subsets of tagging polymorphisms based on analysis of multiple polymorphisms in a genomic region. ID Select and Tagger are two commonly used software tools for identifying tagging polymorphisms. Data from the HapMap project, the Environmental Genome Project, other public sources as well as study participant data can be used for selection of the optimal set of tagging polymorphisms. It is important to note that population differences in linkage disequilibrium, for example, due to ethnicity or sampling variation between the more densely genotyped samples, for example, HapMap populations, and the targeted population, for example, a cancer genetic association study population, must be accounted for when using tagging polymorphisms. Dear students, let's now discuss about utility of linkage disequilibrium to genome-wide association studies. Genetic association studies can also search the entire genome allowing for identification of cancer-related loci or position in unprotected regions. Genome-wide association studies would not be feasible without capitalizing on linkage disequilibrium. This allelic association allows for a reduced set of markers to represent over 12 million common polymorphisms thought to exist. Numerous commercial panels are available for high throughout assessment of genome-wide polymorphisms. Linkage disequilibrium in the human genome population genetics theory describes the way mutation, gene conversion, recombination, natural selection, and the demographic structure of human populations affect patterns of linkage disequilibrium. 
these forces vary along the genome and are generated by highly stochastic that is probabilistic processes so there is currently not a major scientific solution to predict the linkage disequilibrium pattern in any particular genomic region and it must be assessed empirically in appropriately chosen samples. Dear students, let us now talk about the other uses of linkage disequilibrium in cancer research. Linkage disequilibrium also informs hypothesis testing in genetic association studies. The casual allele, if it exists, may be included in the set of assayed markers or it may lie on a haplotype defined by the set of assayed markers. Analysis of haplotypes may therefore provide additional information on association. Numerous methods exist for testing haplotype associations with disease including score testers, logistic regression and Bayesian methods. All methods first estimate haplotype frequencies or probabilities because haplotypes are usually not directly observed. If an association signal is detected, linkage disequilibrium can be used in refinement of the signal wherein an association is detected, that is fine mapping. A particular polymorphism found to be associated with disease may be in linkage disequilibrium with the truly casual allele. Thus, additional analysis of nearby polymorphisms may increase the association signal and provide a targeted region for functional genomics analysis. Furthermore, incorporation of linkage disequilibrium has the potential to improve the power and efficiency of genetic association studies, leading to increased understanding of the genetic causes of cancer. Dear students, let us discuss about the implications of linkage disequilibrium for gene mapping studies. Linkage disequilibrium in sequencing resolution decays more rapidly than previously reported using array data. This enables higher resolution mapping of a trait of interest in outbred populations employing either association or selection mapping strategies. This also implies that selection mapping using haplotype based matrix demands a panel of denser single nucleotide polymorphism or SNPs arrays to efficiently reveal patterns generated by unusually long haplotypes than medium density arrays. The extent of linkage disequilibrium varies across the genomic regions, chromosomes among populations and between species. In other words, genome-wide averaged estimates of the extent of linkage disequilibrium may not adequately reflect linkage disequilibrium patterns of specific regions or population groups. Linkage disequilibrium has broader practical relevance in genomic studies like the optimal number of samples and marker density in either genome-wide association or selection mapping studies may largely vary due to the extremely adverse pattern of linkage disequilibrium within and among chromosomes. Finally, confounding population characteristics such as cryptic allelic correlations or stratification may have serious impact on pattern and structure of linkage disequilibrium in populations that need to be taken into consideration in conducting unbiased genome-wide association mapping. The potential value of haplotypes defined by several single nucleotide polymorphism or SNPs has attracted recent interest. With sufficient linkage disequilibrium, haplotypes could be used in association studies to map common alleles that might influence the susceptibility to common diseases as well as for reconstructing the evolution of the genome. It has been proposed that a globally useful resource need only be based on high frequency variants identified from a few modest samples. Rapid progress has been made in quantifying the pattern of human linkage disequilibrium and haplotypes defined by such common variants within and among populations. However, the quality and utility of the proposed linkage disequilibrium based resource could be seriously compromised if important sampling and analytical factors are overlooked in its design. 
the linkage disequilibrium map should be based on adequately justified criteria defined by sound population genetic principles. The haplotype resource has been justified by the belief that common diseases are affected by common genetic variants like sufficiently to warrant developing an LD mapping resource truncated to include common variants only. However, a chain is only as good as its weakest link. Even within a short, well understood gene association testing can be problematic. For common variants that do happen to be associated with common diseases, recombination, gene conversion and recurrent mutation can occur unseen between the casual variant and marker haplotypes based on sparse common SNPs used to find them because common variants are old and more likely to have undergone such shuffling. Many known factors such as incomplete penetrance and environmental exposure greatly hamper association mapping for complex traits and none increase the probable utility of a common site mapping resource. The considerable evidence already available suggests that common complex diseases are affected by many loci at each of which multiple alleles typically have only small individual effect. Alleles with large or early deleterious effects are clearly worth pursuing but are mostly rare at least in part due to natural selection. Dear students, let's talk about the factors that influence linkage disequilibrium. Mutation and recombination might have the most evident impact on linkage disequilibrium, but there are additional contributors to the extent and distribution of disequilibrium. Most of these involve demographic aspects of a population and tend to sever the relationship between linkage disequilibrium strength and the physical distance between loci or position. Dear students, let's now understand genetic drift with relevance to linkage disequilibrium. This phenomenon describes the change in gene and haplotype frequency in a population every generation owing to the random sampling of gametes that occurs during the production of a finite number of offsprings. Frequency changes are accentuated in small populations. In general, the increased drift of small stable that is not growing populations tend to increase linkage disequilibrium as haplotypes are lost from the population. Such populations might be suitable for disease gene mapping with the idea that genetic drift will accentuate disease and marker allele frequencies, differences between cases and controls. However, the applicability of this phenomenon to gene mapping has not been well characterized yet. The second one is population growth. Rapid population growth decreases linkage disequilibrium by reducing genetic drift. Third one is admixture or migration. Linkage disequilibrium can be created by admixture or by migration that is gene flow between populations. Initially, linkage disequilibrium is proportional to the allele frequency differences between the populations and is unrelated to the distance between markers. In subsequent generations, the spurious linkage disequilibrium between unlinked markers quickly dissipates while linkage disequilibrium between nearby markers is more slowly broken down by recombination. In theory, this would allow the mapping of disease genes in hybrid populations without using many genetic markers. Several admixed populations such as African Americans and Hispanic Americans have been characterized with this application in mind, but the success of this approach will depend heavily on the time since admixture occurred, the frequency differences of the disease of the interest in the parental population and the allele frequency differences. So the disease and circumstances for which this mapping approach will be feasible might turn out to be quite rare and exceptional. Another one is the population structure. Various aspects of population structure are thought to influence linkage disequilibrium. 
population subdivision is likely to have been an important factor in establishing the patterns of linkage disequilibrium in humans. But most of the available limited information comes from the study of model organisms. An interesting recent study of Arabidopsis indicated that extreme inbreeding can produce high levels of linkage disequilibrium without a substantial reduction in levels of variation. This neglected area would benefit from intensified study in humans. The another one is natural selection. There are two primary routes by which selection can affect the extent of disequilibrium. The first is a hitchhiking effect in which an entire haplotype that flanks a favored variant can be rapidly swept to a high frequency or even fixation. Although the effect is generally milder, selection against deleterious variants can also inflate linkage disequilibrium as the deleterious haplotypes are swept from the population. The second way in which selection can affect linkage disequilibrium is through epistatic selection for combination of alleles at two or more loci on the same chromosome. This form of selection leads to the association of particular alleles at different loci. Although this has provided a major motivation for historical studies of linkage disequilibrium in Drosophila genetics as a means of detecting the action of epistatic natural selection, but it has not yet been shown to alter or change linkage disequilibrium in humans. The another one is variable recombination rates. Recombination rates are known to vary by more than an order of magnitude across the genome because breakdown of linkage disequilibrium is primarily driven by recombination. The extent of linkage disequilibrium is expected to vary in inverse relation to the local recombination rate. It is even possible that recombination is largely confined to highly localized recombination hotspots with little recombination elsewhere. According to this view, linkage disequilibrium will be strong across the non-recombining regions and breakdown at hotspots. Although there are intriguing indications that this reflects the situation for some regions, the generality of the hotspot phenomena, the strength of recombination in and outside hotspots, and the length of distribution of these regions remain to be determined. The Another one is the variable mutation rates. Some single nucleotide polymorphisms such as those at CPG dinucleotides might have high mutation rates and therefore show little or no linkage disequilibrium with nearby markers even in the absence of historical recombination. The another one is gene conversion. In a gene conversion event, a short stretch of one copy of a chromosome is transferred to the other copy during meiosis, that is reductional division. The effect is equivalent to two very closely spaced recombination events and can break down linkage disequilibrium in a manner similar to recombination on recurrent mutation. It has recently been shown that rates of gene conversion in humans are high and are important in linkage disequilibrium between very tightly linked markers. Dear students, let's talk about the linkage disequilibrium assessment software tools. Estimating linkage disequilibrium coefficient is computationally simple and can be performed using in-house scripts when the marker density is restricted to the genotypes of SNPs arrays. In sequence resolution, however, estimating linkage disequilibrium coefficients can be computationally burdensome specifically for the mega reference panels such as genome sequencing consortiums of different species. A number of sophisticated programs to estimate linkage disequilibrium statistics from sequencing data are freely available. Plink is a widely used software toolkit for analyzing genetic data and is among the most computationally efficient tools for estimating linkage disequilibrium. VCF Tools is another widely used software toolkit for manipulating and analyzing genetic data that provide utilities to estimate linkage disequilibrium from the variant call format or VCF. VCF Tools work with 
compressed VCF files that is vcf.gz which requires far less storage space than plink bed files. However, it can be computationally demanding for large data sets. Dear students, let's now conclude the topic. Linkage disequilibrium known as the non-random association of alleles at different loci is a sensitive indicator of the population genetics forces that structure a genome. Because of the explosive growth of methods for assessing genetic variation at a fine scale, evolutionary biologists and human geneticists are increasingly exploiting linkage disequilibrium in order to understand past evolutionary and demographic events. Also to map genes that are associated with quantitative characters and inherited diseases and to understand the joint evolution of linked sets of genes at present, linkage disequilibrium is used much more extensively in the study of human than in non-humans. But that is changing as technological advances make extensive genomic studies feasible in other species as well. In summary, two or more alleles are said to be in linkage disequilibrium when they occur randomly in a population. Conversely, alleles are in linkage disequilibrium when they do not occur randomly with respect to each other. Dear students, it was all about today's lecture regarding linkage disequilibrium. Hope you have understood it well. See you next time with a new topic. Till then, take care and goodbye.